mean, it was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn. Basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. We usually do this on Fridays. Today we're going to be doing it on Wednesday because I will be on vacation this weekend with my family. Uh, I apologize for the delay. We had some uh, tech issues, but now that they're resolved, we are going to move forward. Welcome to the deal. That's today's the last episode of season one. So I've been doing this for over a year now. It's crazy. Over a year now. Um, season two will pick up in January that first Friday of January, so stay tuned for that. But let's get started. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. The way this works, you submit your leads, I call them live. That's that's pretty much it, but let's get started. So we are um, going to Omaha, Nebraska. Let's pull up and see what we got here. Let me share my screen so we can see what we're looking at. All right. Omaha, Nebraska. All right, so Omaha, Nebraska, the lead, uh, let's see, they're asking $200,000. She has never updated anything interior for the years that she owned it. She still has form of a style interior, needs some work. Uh, what else? She mentioned that, she mentioned to me that she is a caretaker that helps her with her errands. She has a HELOC of around $50,000. <clears> okay. <throat> Um, we spoke last Friday, mostly building report, but her son was rushed to the hospital for emergency. So she had to go. Okay. Uh, reason for selling elderly looking to downsize. She wants to sell the house as is and be done with it. Does not want to mess with realtors showings. She claims her friends house sold for 210, but that they had done a few repairs to their house before selling. So let's give her a call first. Um, and I'll, I'll touch up on the, uh, whole realtors and showings thing, because just because she doesn't want to mess with realtors doesn't mean that, um, you know, there won't be any showings cause you may or may not need showings, but let's give her a call. See if she picks up the phone. Let's dial. You know, one thing is not dealing with the realtors, but, um, you know, there's ways of making people feel more comfortable when you're dealing with showings because most of the time when you get a property in a contract, your buyers won't take a look at the property. You have to schedule a showing, but with people that are opposed to it, I'll tell you how I overcome that and how I handle that. Let's put this on speaker. And I'll start running comps here. Looks like she picked up the phone and then hung up. I'm going to call her right back. I want to confirm this is the right address because for some reason it's um, – for some reason it's coming up on Zillow. Um, give me one second see what I can do here. So she picked up the phone and she hung up. You know, I'm going to call her right back. Hopefully she picks up the phone. I'm trying to see if I could find this address here just so I'm prepared to run comps. I never run comps before I call the person. I always run comps while they're on the phone. There we go. Okay, let's call right back. I had to pull the property. I have to put on speaker. Two hundred thousand. I'm looking at the comps. Mm. She answered and she hung up again. So we're gonna move on to the next lead. I will tell you, she's asking two hundred thousand dollars. The high sold property uh, that's comparable sold for two forty five. Okay. Um, there are cash comps surprising somewhere around two hundred five. Uh, let me take a look at some flips. Let me see. One, two, yeah. Looks like investors are buying between 140 to 170. 
I think, um, you know, we don't know how negotiable she is because she didn't pick up the phone. But one thing I wanted to point out is somebody that somebody that um, wants to, uh, you know, they don't want to deal with the realtors and showings and all that. You know, I want to find out why are they opposed to dealing with the realtors? Is it because of the showings? Is it because of the commission? Is it because... I don't know. Some people just say real estate agents. Okay. Um, now if they're showings, you have to be, um, very careful how you, you know, offer that option because if they don't want showings and you need a showing, you have to figure out what is it about the showing that they don't like. Hey, um, just out of curiosity, I, I noticed you spoke with my assistant and you don't like dealing with the realtors or showings. Uh, you know, realtors, no problem. But what I will tell you is, at some point throughout this process, we will have to confirm everything we discuss over the phone. You know, uh, we'll never just show up. We want to make sure that we schedule a day or two in advance if we have to have partners take a look at it, need photos or whatever, and just try to figure out why they're opposed to it. But um, some people that have tenants or live in the house, they just their main fear. What I've noticed for people that when it comes to showing or inspection, their main fear is people just showing up, um, you know, without calling ahead. And typically when you let somebody know, Hey, I need to have my partner go out to the property. Um, you know, sometime this week, I'm calling you in advance to see what day and time works best for you. That way you show them respect that you're not just going to show up. You want to ask them for permission on what day and time. Now there's already a commitment since you're already under contract with a person, but, um, you know, just respect their time. Usually they're a little bit more open and flexible when they get to decide what that uh, day and time is. Okay. And that's work. It has to work on both sides. It can't just be, it just can't be you showing up or you picking the day. It has to be a day that works best for both of you. Um, you know, I've seen people make the mistake of just because you have an inspection period, you send somebody out there, homeowners get pissed off when they, you know, even if you send a photographer out there, just to take a look at the pro uh, property, take some photos. They don't like, you know, showing up unannounced. It's like a surprise. You know, we don't know what their schedule consists of and what they're doing. So we have to make sure that you get permission from the homeowner. So, you know, try to figure out why they're opposed to that and what would be the deciding factor between um, getting photos or not. Otherwise, they're going to have to pro provide on their own, which you know, if a homeowner ever provides photos, they're usually not good photos. All right, so we're moving on to um, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Let me take this off here real quick. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta's a great market. Man, this house, I think I called this house a while back previously. It's It needs a lot of work. This is the house. All right. So this one, it looks familiar. Let me see. They're asking $190,000. Okay. Um, paint job needed. Fair condition. Roof and HVAC are in good condition. That's also vacant. Looking to move out of town. They're asking one. All right. Let's give them a call. Vacant, huh? That's always good. The house looks like it needs a lot of work anyways. It just says paint job needed. Now, I was looking at some other photos on Zillow of this property, and it, it looks like really bad. The street view image actually looks better than the pictures on Zillow. Google street view sometimes is funky, the photos. All right, let's give them a call, see what happens. Let's see what happens. They're asking 190. Let's start running comps. <clears throat> it says moving out of town, but if they don't live in the property, why would that matter? Under paint on me for condition, roof change back. It's also vacant, looking to move out of town. Maybe they don't, maybe they're managing it low key and they don't want to deal with it anymore.
Hello, this is Rodney Mullins. Great to hear from you. Please leave a message. At- I hate those voicemails that sound like uh, they actually pick up the phone. Let's call them right back. <laughs> Great to hear from you. Rodney's already excited. He's already excited for me calling him, and I haven't even spoke with him yet. I wonder if he'll be as excited to sell his house to me at a discount. Let's see what happens. Um, let's run the comps. 190. I could sell very quickly if, I mean, let me see here. There's a house that sold for $25,000 right down the street. And then, and then you have a house that sold for $320,000. So something I pay really close to, hold on. Hello? Hello, this is Rodney. You excited right to hear from you. me? Please leave a message. Yeah, he's not answering. All right, moving on. So this is a very um, interesting pocket. You have a property that sold for $25,000, and then you have one not too far away, a little bit southwest, so for $320,000. When you're running comps, not only pay attention to the bedroom, bath, square footage, that's also important, but the year built is key. Sometimes these higher priced properties are way newer, okay? So you want to make sure you pay close attention to the year built because if you're looking at something fairly new, it's not going to make sense. Our properties built... 1930 this comp is built in 1930 it's a little bit bigger what did they buy this for hundred and fifteen thousand dollars all right well just because they bought it at that price doesn't mean that um that that's what your max offer is that's another thing they actually bought this and then they resold it for a hundred thousand ouch okay all right so rodney doesn't want to talk we're going to move on to the next person we are going to California. Uh, by the way, if somebody, um, if they're moving out of town, okay, if somebody's moving out of town and they, well, they want to sell the property because they're moving out of town, but the property is vacant, you know, you can let the homeowner know, hey, just let, uh, just to let you know whether you live in the property or not, you know, we can deal with this whole process A to Z completely virtual. We don't even have to meet. And this is how we're able to do this. And you can explain to them how you're able to do it, okay? Um, you know, when it comes to negotiations, look at this picture, Angela. Let me see if I could show you this picture. I can't. The picture's too small. It's going to disclose the address, and I don't want to do that, okay? Okay. Um, for some reason, it looks so much worse on the photos. Another thing, if you ever see photos on Zillow, make sure you ask the seller, hey, I see photos of this property on Zillow. Are these recent? You know, did you take these? Oh, here we got one, Kelly. All right. So this guy also has photos. You always want to bring up the photos, okay? Really important that you bring up the photos. So let me show you what I'm looking at here. California properties, higher price points in Atlanta. Somebody's calling me. I can't answer the phone right now. Um, whoops, hold on a second. Yeah. This has a lot of photos, which is great. But um, you want to figure out why are there photos on there, you know? All right, so let's see what the story is. They're asking $289,000. Needs cosmetic work. Tenants currently living inside paying $2,100 a month. Reason for selling. Wife died. All right. Let's give them a call. Um, you know, if somebody ever has uh, somebody that passes away in their family, you know, things get very emotional for them. Or some people are very straight to the point. You know, this is why I want to sell. This is how much I want. If you can give it to me, great. If not, no big deal. But, um, you know, move at a little bit slower pace with these kinds of sellers because we don't know what they are uh, going through. What is their state of mind? You know, they usually make a lot of emotional decisions and you don't want to do anything to trigger them to thinking that you're rushing them because they do not like that. OK, let's take a look at this property here. Oh. Is that this? Let me see this thing. Ten 
tenants living in it, huh? Hello? Hey, Mr. Schwab. Hey. Hey, my name is Steven. Um, I believe you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on Circle View Drive. Were you still looking to sell? Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. Did I catch it a good time? Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. All right, great. So um, the reason I'm calling you, I actually want to make you an offer on the property. My process is real simple. I just want to ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes. I'll go and evaluate the area in the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. All right, perfect. And uh, before I get started, I like letting everybody know this up front. You know, we are an investment company. If I'm not a good fit, I'll let you know. I don't want to waste anybody's time. And uh, we also have a real estate agent just in case we may not be a good fit. Does that make sense? Sure. All right, perfect. So I was looking here in the notes. I see here it just needs some cosmetic work. Uh, it's currently tenant occupied. They're paying about 2100 Can you tell me a little bit more specifically about, you know, like the condition, like bathrooms, kitchens, roof, HVAC, things like that? Uh, let's see. Well, the house has been painted, um, has a brand new roof. Okay. Uh, it's good. It's going to need a, a new deck. Um, the uh, inside of the house looks real good. In general, it looks real good. It's been owner. It's been occupied, uh, for gosh, for 10, 15 years. Wow. Um, and, um, uh people i talked to about it have said for example they say oh i know that house i when i was in high school that was a house where all the kids wanted to end up at and uh so there was always something going on in the house oh okay talking about like the tenants throwing a party or something or no just that like the kids when they're growing up, that's where, that's where their um, their classmates wanted to end up because the vibes were so good. Ah, um, okay. Put a brand new water heater in about eleven months ago. I guess the house um, comes with good vibes. That's a extra twenty thousand dollars. It's been well maintained, and um, just that's more than anything. What people told me was that they um uh it was the neighbor house where everybody felt real comfortable with, he wants you know, um, being at so I'm that's where that. everybody always used to um, end up at not a not a party what? house just kind of like the, the the neighborhood house gotcha okay um and i see here uh you're looking us up because your spouse passed Okay, sorry to hear that. Um, how long have you been trying to sell it? Well, I, it's it's um, not that I was trying to sell it. I had it on the market for hours when it sold, but then um, um, it turned out that we have the um, the title was whatever title it says um, pending right now tenants in common or whatever and. We have to hire an attorney to to uh, change the, the title, but the courts had a had a court date in August, I think August sixth, and um, they ended, ended up notifying us that they had so many people pass away in the county mm -hmm. that they were giving us a. Um, court date in uh, November. Oh, November. Okay. And, um, so they said, uh, you'll have to wait for court, which we did and got everything taken care of in court. Uh, and because we weren't going to advertise it on the market, uh, until we got the, uh, tenants so in common or whatever changed. So now mm -hmm. that it now it's in my name, uh, my realtor put a lady in the house on a, a twelve month lease. Okay. Uh, because we had um, 
you know, we had mortgage payments that were going to be due in November and so forth. And yeah, so that's what he did. So, um, yeah, no, it, it was, um, we had 28 offers and it sold or would have sold in four hours. 28 offers. Holy cow. 28 offers. That's a lot of offers. So, um, you know, that's a lot of offers. Yeah. If you got the price you wanted, I mean, what kind of time frame were you looking more or less to sell about like a week, a month, a couple months? We are going to sell it in, um, third week in November. We had an open escrow mm -hmm. and, uh, we were just waiting for, um, to get all the uh, ducks in a row. And then, um, then we couldn't sell it after all. So we couldn't close escrow. Gotcha. So what, what do you plan on doing right now? Are you looking to relist it or are you looking to sell it off market? Um, the lady that's in it, uh, doesn't know she'll have the finances in Sports February out. to buy it. And, uh, and so we, we said, let's, uh, let's just put you in there as a renter. And then we'll uh, see what happens in February. Gotcha. So you're giving her first right to purchase the property, and you'll know by February. Not really. Not not, not really first rights, but um, mm. um, it's just uh, you know we just kind of have a. I want to see if he tells me the highest offer he did get um, for it. She's it's a lot of offers. In, um, I think it's at twenty-eight because she's going through a. LA County divorce. So she's living at her mom and dad's house and her kids are uh, living in the house here. Gotcha. So did you have any ideas to, um, you know, what you think it might be worth or what you're looking to at least sell for considering you got 28 offers, I think you said. <laughs> she, um, it was going to be, um, um, the other family that mm. was going to purchase it in, in, um, August was going to, um, purchase it actually had a, a deposit on the house at, at 289. 289. Wow. Okay. And this was all through a, a listing agent and everything. Yeah, Burning Springs Realty. It used to be a uh, Coldwell Banker. I bought gotcha. I bought six homes, six homes through them. Oh wow! Or, do you like flip houses? Or are you looking for rentals? Or you know, just um, homes that I've homes that I've owned, and um, like the one I'm in now is uh, one of their houses. Um, the last two homes I purchased through them mm -hmm. and um uh two divorces so had to get rid of the house gotcha okay now um you know if you were to sell this off market if we were to cover like closing costs fees commissions there's no agent involved uh what do you think would be the best price you can do i haven't i haven't really thought because our um our uh, can do to it real estate agent now also handles um, I'm looking my at rentals. I two have six rental solid homes. comps. Um, I've I got anchor prices guy. I think with the most of years, and close to two hundred thousand through their office. So I I really haven't. But he has twenty but offers. Should, I really haven't thought about it. Gotcha. And do you know um you know out of those twenty offers, what, what kind of range were they in, or what was your highest one? Uh, 301. Wow. If I were you, I would take that and run with it because I think that's that's a really, really solid price, if, depending if they're serious or not. I don't know, but that's that's pretty high considering what's selling in the area. Yeah, yeah I really I really don't know. It's it's uh, it's been crazy how many uh, what the uh, offers have been on. Maybe a lot more direct with this guy. Some of the homes 
um, because you can't compete with a three hundred thousand dollar um, offer. Whether they're, I mean, whether they're bluffing or not, he's already like raising the expectations of this guy. For years, was um, <clears throat> was it's like um, on the slope or something. Like I was distracted here. I was up, I was watching this. this snow plow go by here um um uh, like one house was just incredible i could not believe what the um what the offer was and then my ex-wife had a house that she i want to say he's also open to selling before because uh, i don't know if he made a commitment with this lady to wait until february what, what uh she ended up actually uh, closing you guys keep the on. questions coming. I'll answer some right after and, this call. Um, I don't know how long this guy's going to talk for, but I got to redirect him back to like the main things. 17 years ago, uh, for one, what did I buy it for? One, 135, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they just, they just appraised it at 444. Wow. So, so, things were just so astronomical and different that um and you know actual you know selling price not just the, yeah and the perspective. i know that you didn't give you know, this lady the first right to purchase it but have you made a commitment with her and is she aware that you know are, are you waiting until february to sell the house no matter what kind of offers you get uh no actually as a matter of fact my realtor called her last week and said well you know we could sell you the house now and the only difference is going to be that you're you're owning the house instead of renting mm -hmm. and that was a phone call he made to her last week and that's when she told him well i don't know what's going to happen till at least mid january because of the divorce and um mm -hmm everything was just kind of left um you know not even pending just yeah just uh right you know i i just don't know she said so would you be open to selling it to somebody else if they honor her lease until she goes through that situation sure okay because i mean i'm looking at properties in the area now obviously as an investor you know we're in the business of flipping it renovating it put it back on the market or rent it out uh, but I'm looking at properties in the area. Are you familiar with Christmas Tree Lane? Um, is that the name of the street? Yeah, Christmas Tree Lane. It's right down from Wilderness Road. Uh, that's probably about 20 feet away from here. Yeah, there's a property here. I'm looking at yours. Yours is a 32979 square feet built 1976 this one's pretty comparable now I'm, i want to look at properties and as this condition i don't want to look at renovated properties or else i'm wasting my time but i see one on 31684 christmas tree lane and it looks like this one sold for 160. um i don't i don't know any of the houses on christmas mm -hmm. um i i can i can <laughs> I can basically look at the street sign right now. Um, yeah. But taking that to consideration, I mean, if we were to pay you cash, I mean, what do you think would make sense for you? You know? I don't know. I, as much as possible and whatever the market He does no idea. So uh, I'm going to... Um, like giving it away because, you know, we did, you know, we did do some things to it. That, that That's not really the big factor it's just that we're already looking at he knows how much he wants property he just doesn't and, um want to say uh up in uh, flagstaff arizona so um i don't i don't flip homes it's just that it's just that right now the the market just kind of went crazy mm -hmm. um christmas uh the house the houses there are basically smaller homes um though i'm not familiar with them the the daughter of the owner of the coffee shop 
So this guy's like, I, I don't think he realizes how much he even wants for it at this point. I don't think he's motivated enough. He mentioned he doesn't. Oh, he mentioned that he doesn't want to give the house away. He has a tenant that's going through some stuff. He offered her to buy the house. Don't know by February. Then I asked him, are you open to selling to somebody else before February? He said yes. I anchor priced him at 160. He doesn't really even have a reaction. Um, so 28 offers is going to be real tricky to compete with. I personally, if this was my lead, I would set up an appointment to meet with the person. I think that's what's best here because we can talk numbers all day over the phone. It doesn't mean he's going to commit and sign a contract immediately. But I think this is worth setting up an appointment. So this is what I'm going to do. Whoever submit this lead, I'm going to let them know that, hey, we have agents that we work with. Is um, meeting with somebody, something you're open to, guys on the property, blah, blah, blah. Because he's a talker. Um you know, but he's not really sure of what he wants to do. So I feel like he needs that face to face appointment. So let me let him talk a few more seconds and then I'm going to present this option because this isn't going to go anywhere. Circle view, too. Gotcha. And circle view is, again, a different sort of a different market almost than luring pines. It's just. There are certain places at homes. This house is relatively large, you know. Yeah, I saw that in the photos uh, on Zillow. I was looking at some photos. Hey, you know what would be best um, if you're open to it? You know, I, we have, we work with agents in the area. And it's kind of tricky to discuss numbers considering, you know, we both don't really know where we'd be at. If you're open to it, Maybe we can schedule a day and time that one of our agents can meet with you at the property, and then that'll give you better understanding of what we can offer down to the penny. At which property? At uh, Circle View? Yes, at Circle View. Is that something you're open to if that works out? We can coordinate a day and time that works best for you? I suppose, I suppose so. I've been there one time in three years. Wow. So I... I don't care how long he has or has not been there. The point is we got to meet with the guy in person to get something on paper, especially when you are competing with 28 other offers. It's like a, a bidding war. I guess, you know, this year is pretty hot, but um, he had it listed. It didn't work out. He had a list for 241 days and it fell through. Gotcha. Okay. So um, what I can do is I'm going to let my partner know. I'll have them reach out to you, and then um, we could probably coordinate something. That I know the holidays are a little bit tricky, so hopefully, you know, um, maybe early January or, or later this month, whatever works best for you and my partner. But I'll have them give you a call sometime um, this week, and then you both can coordinate what works best for you, okay? Okay, and, and just so you know, it is um, uh, the, the rental – is coordinated by um, Running Springs Realty, and that's um, uh, Shane Prince at mm -hmm. uh, Running Springs Realty. Perfect. Okay, I will let them know. But thank you so much for uh, speaking with me. I hope you have a you know happy holidays and just be on the lookout for our call. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. So. We could talk. This is a, this is a perfect example of somebody that's willing to talk all day, you know, but it gets nowhere. And the thing is, if you're overbuilding rapport and drag out the conversation, you're really wasting time when you could spend that time with people that actually want to sell. So let's take some questions real quick. Um, so who submitted that lead real quick? I want to make sure that you set up an appointment with this seller. He is serious. He's just not like motivated to a point where it's uh, he's in a rush. Dylan, you submit this lead. Call this gentleman back sometime this week and coordinate something that works best um, for both of you. Or if you, ha if you have any agents in the area that you know, let them know how, how you do business. You can partner up with them on it. Okay. All right. So let's take some, um, some questions here real quick. How do I run comps uh, when there is no information? If you are talking with a seller 
and the subject property has zero comps in the area, the first thing I would do is I would look into what list I'm pulling, what areas I'm looking at, because when you're pulling data, you want to make sure that you're focusing on areas where there's a lot of activity. And sometimes you're going to get like, you know, these weird properties, or maybe they have another property that's referred or whatever. If there's zero comps in the area, I'm overly conservative. And what that looks like is depending on your market, if the tax assessed value is drastically Sorry, lower, you know, if the tax assessed value is drastically lower than, um, Hold on, my my Apple Watch is always talking to me, so I just gotta um, take this off for a second. What I'm saying is, depending on your market, the tax assessed value, depending where you live, is usually a lot lower. Some markets, it's right on the penny. Florida, it's a lot lower typically. So you want to create your own range at at, at a, something that benefits you, right? So um, what I typically do is there's no anchor prices, right? You don't want to lie and say, hey, are you familiar with this and make up some random address. You want to create a range that works best for you. And typically the anchor price in this scenario would be the tax assessed value. And my maximum allowable offer will typically be 50% um, of the Zestimate, right? So let's say um, the Zestimate's 100,000, okay? My $50,000 is going to be my maximum um, allowable offer in this case. All right. Because the thing is, that's the way I do it only because it's overly conservative way of doing it. And when you do lock it up, it's going to be harder to sell. Who are you going to sell to if there's no data in the area? You know, so that's something you want to uh, take into consideration. I also like working with agents in the area. If I get a property 50 percent of the Zestimate in an area where there's not much activity as far as investors, I usually partner up with an agent and it ends up selling to an individual. And that goes for land or residential. It's like kind of those like weird properties. So if you feel like you got it at a great price, be overly conservative, but also be willing to work with agents. Okay. So that's what I typically do. Good vibes only. Yeah. That house had really good vibes. He said, that's where everybody wants to be during the summer is that house. Okay. Um, how do you talk to red slash straightforward sellers with straightforward sellers? I'm just like them. I guess some people call mirroring and all this stuff, right? With people that are straightforward, I'm also very straightforward, but I like to come straightforward with facts because some people will be very analytical and they think they know everything and they say, oh, Bob Sal sold for 300000 and it was a piece of junk. Oh, you know, that's great, but I'm looking at renovated properties sold for like two fifty, so I'm not sure, um, you know, if that's the correct price, if that's the same kind of comparable properties, it, it, you know, if his is a lot newer. Like there's a lot of things you have to come to the table with. Uh, when you're talking with people that are straightforward, okay? So you can be straightforward in a polite, firm way, but when you have facts you bring to the table, it gives you a lot more ammunition in your conversation, okay? Uh, I'm talking to sellers that I've been following for months. What's a better way for myself to reach and close those sellers? So if you've been following up somebody for months, number one, try different phone numbers, Google Voice, work phone, uh, friends phone, whatever. Uh, number two, SMS them from different phone numbers, RVM, right? You could do this text blast, RVM, SMS. Um, and then if they're still not answering, this is where I kind of think outside the box, right? I can have somebody put a sticky note on their door. A really um, interesting way that something a lot of people don't do is deliver them a pizza. Yes, you heard that right. Deliver a pizza. If they don't live in the house, look at the mailing address. Send them a pizza. Bob, this is Stephen. Please call me by your house. It's just these things are outside. You can send flowers, some Amazon gift card. It doesn't have to be a pizza, but you know, it could be anything, right? Um, and prepay for it, obviously. Don't send a pizza, you know, don't tell a pizza, man, I want a pizza, and then like they gotta pay for it. That, if anything, that's gonna make him even more mad, right? So make sure you uh prepay for it, plus a tip, whatever. But start thinking outside the box to really grab people's attention because remember, if that person uh, still has a phone line, at some point they have to pick up the phone. Where people go ghost is typically when you don't set up a time to follow up, right? So when you do call them back, they have no idea. They're not expecting it, all right? And the second thing is you call a lot. So they see your phone number and they're like, oh, this is Stephen Call me. I'm just, I, is that the investor guy? I don't want to deal with him, right? So that's when you start calling from different numbers. If they still don't answer from different numbers, we don't know what's going on in the background. 
they may be dealing with something else on the back end that we don't know. Some people are dealing with funerals or family issues, whatever. So this is where you want to think outside the box by sending a pizza, flowers. Uh, you know, I know people that they dealt with a funeral. You may have sent flowers at the right time. You know, some people that's an emotional trigger for some people. Right. So um, just fit, think outside the box. Think of different scenarios. OK. Uh, on top of following up a lot. Mr. Mouse, I've been watching this while making phone calls on my end as well and just heard a part of the script that I just used now. Lifesaver. Awesome. Yeah, the script is magic when you start using it a lot. You start memorizing it. And um, that's where we're here. All right. So let's let's keep going. Uh, keep the questions coming. I'm going to keep going. Let's see. We are going to North Carolina. Let me pull this up and see what comes up. Hopefully, we don't talk to a person that drags a conversation long. You know, when you anchor price somebody, they don't even give a reaction. They don't even know how much they want, but they don't want to give it away, and they're just not in a rush. Set an appointment. All right? You can't close every single deal over the phone, and if you try to close a deal over the phone that you know is not going to be closed, it's actually going to hurt you more than help you. Okay? So just keep that in mind when you're dealing with people like that, you know? Um, make sure you get a commitment from them to accept the fact to meet up, right? Uh, and for us, we send agents out there. They're just more credible. They're more trustworthy than this just random person off Craigslist. Or you can go out there, right? You or your team can go out there. Um, just depends on how your business. Okay, there's two houses here. Hold on a second. I think it's this one. Beautiful. This is a, this is exactly what I look for. Okay. All right, so um, what's up with this one? So they're asking $200,000. Vacant side needs updates in kitchen, needs new flooring on vacant side. So hold on, it's a vacant side. Yeah. Okay. Um, needs some work. Let's see. You put, uh, okay, she so has two duplexes. So. Am I looking at the I, yeah? This is the right address. Two duplexes, rented one, six hundred other side is vacant. Okay, so you know North Carolina, you get a lot of these properties that have two houses on one address. This is probably one of them. So I guess this is considered duplex because I am looking at the correct address. One is uh, rented for six hundred. We'll just pretend it's, uh, it's this one. <laughs> uh, laminate carpet flooring, occupied side. All right, let's give them a call. Oh, reason for selling once an offer. Beautiful. So let's give the guy a call and see if he picks up the phone. Let's see. All right, let's put on speaker. And then I will start running comps here while it's ringing. What's their name? Okay. I can't really tell which one's vacant. Maybe this one would have some personal belongings here. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mr. Glenn. Yes. Hey, my name is Stephen. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your properties on Liberty Street. Were you still looking to sell? No, not just that. I'm doing some major renovations. I'm going to hold on to them. Okay. No, no matter how much we pay to you, you'll be looking to sell? <laughs> uh, well, I need to make an offer. Yeah, I consider it. Okay. Did I catch it a good time? Uh, yeah, you're fine. All right, perfect. So um, the reason I'm calling you is I just want to make you an offer. Um, you know, my process is real simple. What I'll do is I'll go ahead, ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes, and then I'll go into Valley there, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Yes, fine. All right, perfect. And I like letting everybody know up front, you know, we are an investment company, so – if I'm not a good fit, I'm not going to drag you along and waste your time. I'll let you know up front. Um, but we have real estate agents just in case. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right, perfect. So this is a, I see your notes, it's a duplex, right? Um, uh -huh. One side's vacant, they need some updates, and then the other one is rented, $600. Um, can you tell me a little bit more specifically about the condition of both of them? You talking about 1404 Living Street? No, hold on a second. 1408. Let me see here. Repeat that address. Uh, 004. That's what I see here. Well, I actually, I since I finished up dating both sides, baby, because it's, it's you know, I put them in the floor in the living room, carpet in the bedroom. room. Mm -hmm. New violin in the kitchen, a new counter in the kitchen on the right side. Mm -hmm. Got new windows in the building. Then, yeah, I made a couple more updates. This guy's not motivated. Um, I can tell because he wants an offer, but he also said he's doing some updates, so I'm expecting he wants top dollar. Okay. And the one that's um, currently rented, are, are how long have they been in that property? Well, I just rented both sides because I. The one side, I was fortunate they were uh, right. Two months ago, left. I just rented last weekend. Oh, nice. Okay. Six fifty each year, rent for six fifty apiece. Okay. And are they on a um, like a month to month or annual lease? Yeah, it's a month to month lease. Month to month. Okay, perfect. Month to month. So they're both renting, which is good. I mean, it seems like decent properties. What? Why are you open to, uh, you know, getting offers? Uh, well, I've been putting on the market. I just kept getting a bunch of offers. Yeah. Like, any property in Durham, man, any landlord in the world, for homeowner period, he's getting offers on the property. In terms of hot market. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, I'm trying to look around at some similar properties, considering these are duplexes. I mean, while I'm looking around, if you were to sell it, did you have any ideas to? What you think they might be worth, or what you were looking to at least sell for? Uh, well, I really, I'm not going to get rid of for less than probably about two forty. Two forty. Good rent return on it, and the property started going up in value. I'm yeah. Push to get rid of it because the income coming in. Nothing less than two. I think that's actually a, a really good price if you were to list it. Have you ever considered listing it when you already sell? Yeah, we're going to Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I would be nowhere around that. I didn't want to waste your time. I mean, I, I would be somewhere around right. 150, and that's not going to make sense to you. Right, right. Okay. Okay. I'll let my partner know, and, uh, you know, we'll follow up in the future just in case. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I didn't tell him we'll give him 150. I said we'd be around 150. Um, he wanted 240. Uh, he is realistic about it. Eh, he, he's asking a little bit above full market value, but you know, he doesn't sound anybody. Anytime somebody says that they're willing to sell, um, well, the reason for selling is they just want to hear an offer. They are not motivated at all. They're not motivated at all. All right. So we got some more questions here. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, rural areas are tough. Um, Let's see. Hey, Stephen, what's the best way to find cash buyers in a new area you ever deal in? So the best way to find cash buyers, there's a lot. Um, let me show you something. I mean, PropStream is good. You can actually go to – let me see if I can share my screen here real quick. Let me take this address off. Let's say I'm in Tampa. Let me share this. How do I share this screen? All right. So one of the things you can do to find cash buyers, MLS, prop stream, I mean, networking events. Um, but if you've never done a deal in that area, Facebook groups are one of my favorite ways. Okay. For one of my favorite ways to build a cash buyers. Uh, but another way is just pulling data. The thing is you want to make sure that these people are active. That's the main thing is that they're active. So check this out. So if you're using PropStream, I'm going to go to full screen mode and take myself out here. If you're using PropStream, something you can do is um, you just click cash buyers right here. Look at this, 41,000, all right? 
and then you can select all this add it to a list okay and um you just get them skip trace but you don't know if these people are active and how many you know deals they do and all that stuff so i i prefer more of an organic approach right so you can skip trace them get a get a va and a power dollars to start dialing them but um you know my favorite r real way is networking events and facebook groups they're usually people that you meet their face to face or you know somebody that knows somebody and just vet them good make sure when you're talking to cash buyers how many flips have you done the last 90 days something i posted about a while back is avoid the people say hey send me anything and everything i'll buy anything and everything and when you send them something they're like, it's not what i want it defeats a purpose okay so get very specific how many flips have you done the last 90 days how quickly can you close uh what zip codes do you prefer okay these are things you should be asking so i prefer facebook groups prop stream and mls um <clears throat> if a seller tells you the fire department told them the house has to be demoed complete do you offer to buy it just as land this is an interesting question because a lot of people don't know you can actually make three checks on fire damage properties okay on my acquisitions accelerator we're gonna have a, a guest that talks and specializes in fire damage properties you can make more money with fire damage properties uh, but it's a little bit long term kind of play it's a little bit different approach so uh but ideally you got to get the seller on the same page as you hey considering your house just burnt down wouldn't you agree that as an investor i'm looking at for land value right there's different ways of going about it sometimes they can be salvaged depending how much damage has been done but i want them to get in that mindset of um you know i'm looking at land first as an investor what if you offered a seller price um what if you offered a seller a price they ask for a little bit more you agree you agree but they still don't sign contract you sent then they say they want to give a family member time to buy so if you offered a price they ask for a little bit more you agree to it you know I don't see why they wouldn't sign the contract so what i do whenever i get an accepted offer i say hey i think that price makes sense to me um i gotta double check with my partner i just gotta make sure if we can do that price because i gotta double check with them if they say yes it's okay they give me the green light is this something you're ready to move forward today as soon as they say yes i know i'm getting a signed contract if they say no you want to find out why ask them questions hey you know you you like the price but you're not ready to move forward today what would be your deciding factor between selling the property or not and also get give them clarity on what it means moving forward today because some people think literally think they have to be at the house the same day that's not the way it works so if they say what do you mean or they sound unsure say hey just let you know what i mean as far as uh moving forward in today is getting an agreement in place that allows us to start our due diligence and then you let us know when we'd like uh when you'd like to close and we can work that out but what I mean by getting the ball, uh, getting started today, getting signed today, it's just getting the ball rolling as far as paperwork, title work, due diligence, inspection. And then we can set up a day and time as far as closing the work best for both of us. How's that sound? Okay. But always, anytime you get somebody that accepts the offer, you both agree to it, make sure that you say, if we can do this price, is this something you're ready to move forward today? Okay. Um... Hey, Steven, I messaged you last week on Instagram for the promo code in the deal desk for your acquisitions course. I still have not received the promo code. Shoot me a DM again because I get these messages that go in requests and it's a whole bunch of bots selling me like, you know, random stuff. So um, I'm usually pretty good with DMs. Shoot me another DM. I do have a promo code for the course. Um, you know, I'll, sh I'll give you the DM. It, the course is 500 bucks, 497 With the promo code, it's $97. So 80% off right before the holidays. Shoot me DM if you want that. Shoot me DM on Instagram. If I didn't get back to in time, keep resending it. So I apologize. I get a lot of garbage and spam in the DM sometimes, okay? Um, I think you were talking about the lead we were just looking at. Yeah, we'd have to be like 150 for that guy I just spoke with. Uh, how do you run comps for land that are in the middle of nowhere? So the first thing I do when I'm running comps on land is I look at new construction um that's the first thing i look at and 
I will look at this, the size of the lot, the size of the lot, the zoning uh, in some markets, and then I'll look at for new construction. I want to make sure it's similar zoning, similar square footage of lots. I look at the transaction history. And I see what the builder bought it for. And whatever I see multiple you know, builders buying it for, it's the same thing like with a regular house. So you just want to stay underneath what they bought it for. Um, and then after you're done looking at that, make sure you also look at vacant land being sold in the area. Okay. Be very careful when you're in an area where there's like residential on one side, commercial on one side, your max offer needs to be uh, reflected on the zoning, what that land could be used for. Do you ever pitch creative finance uh, for multifamily commercial? My partner and I focus on that when it comes to creative financing, you know, a lot of people do creative financing for single family houses. Um, you know, I, just, I literally just give a cash offer and or list it when it comes to creative financing we focus more on commercial properties so um you know maybe leaving money on the table but then again you know commercial are bigger deals than than wholesaling deals kind of thing but creative financing is an excellent strategy i'm also going to have a guest speak on creative financing how to structure it how to even find out if the seller wants that or not um on the acquisitions accelerator okay Bada beam, bada boom. Iraqi, go ahead and send me that DM on Instagram for the promo code. And that goes for anybody watching. If you want a promo code um, for the course, let me know, and I will send it over to you. I'm looking at my request right now. I don't see you, Rocky. I just get so much garbage, like... I don't know. I get like um, people selling me followers, people selling me follow this for NFT and that, uh, this, uh, you know, it's just a bunch of spam. Okay. So I, I, I actually got to clean this up. So thanks for reminding me. So, uh, you know, I don't mind being blown up. There you are. Is that you? Maybe not. <laughs> Somebody else asked me for promo code, but I'll give you the promo code. But um, that's all we got time for today, guys. The next episode of the Deal Desk will be January, I believe, 7th is that first Friday. Let me see. Yeah, January 7th is the first Friday of 2022. It's going to be very interesting. I'm going to bring up some guests, interview them, and I'm going to see if they're willing to get on the phones. So we'll see. We're, we're going to make it interesting. Um, but, guys, I will see you guys next year. Have happy holidays. Um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, all that. Okay? So hopefully you guys enjoyed season one. It's been quite a journey. Make sure you guys keep practicing. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care.